feel like I haven't really been tended to a lot self-care wise. And he has, I mean, all he needs is his haircut. You could teach me how to do it. I do for you. But you want to go to the... I want to go. I, I want the experience the just like he wants. There. I found some good. Because I can cut thing. hair. I can trim his beard. I can do his eyebrows if he wants me to. Would you let her do that? No. Uh, we tried once with the eyebrows and I ended up on one. <laughs> Whatever. No, he didn't. Is there anything more sacred than marriage? I'm Kot Takahashi and in today's episode of Split Decision, we're focusing on eternal love. The goal of Split Decision is to be as honest as you can be no matter what. I want you to know this is a safe space. You might not like everything that you're gonna hear, but with honesty comes unity. Are you guys ready? For sure. Of course. The first prompt is, my partner's family has caused issues in our relationship. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Go ahead and turn around. Okay. So Joshua, you are on yes. Yeah. Elena's parents have uh, caused some issues. I, I don't want to get in, it's her family, right? And so I don't want to get into anything specific or anybody specific, but there's been a couple times now, I would say, where maybe some things happen between her and her family, and that bleeds into our relationship and kind of causes some turmoil there that we both end up realizing would not have been there if it wasn't for that outside influence, you know? Specifically, my son having or not knowing his family members, and that, that hurts me. I'm learning that, mm, I'm gonna speak up and say, hey, this hurts, and I would like if you guys put some effort, because I'm tired of always putting the effort. You said your son doesn't know his family members? Yeah, they, they're like strangers to him, basically. I don't know, as a mother, if m any of my children said they were hurting, like, say, dealing with the death of a parent, wouldn't you want to console them? I didn't get that. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't get that from any, any of my blood relatives and it hurts. I, it's just good to know that I have him and I have my son that, that's on my team. Thank that's you. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My name is Joshua and I'm 28 years old. My name is Elena and I'm 30 years old. And we've been married just over two years. Can I be in the middle? I, yeah, I saw you kind of going back and forth there. He has a lot of turmoil on his end of his side of the family. Like he calls there for the comfort and it's just like a, they, he doesn't get that. And it fucks me up, it fucks him up and it's just like, I don't know, he doesn't get the attention that he earns for and he needs because I mean, we're by ourselves here. I have a father in rehab, a mother that's starting a new family with a stepdad so I gotta kinda you know, make my, make my own wave. Like I'll be the first one to graduate college from the family house and just kind of all went different paths. That's why I moved out when I was like 18. So like every, everything moves pretty, pretty fast, but we're making it work, making our own family. My name's Haley and I'm 21 years old. Hello, my name is Daniel. I'm 22 years old and we have been married for two years. So Luca, you're standing on yes. Yeah, it's not a surprise. Um, we've had like really major issues. Um, and if they saw this, they would know. They, they know what they've done. I hope they feel remorse. But there's just instances in which there was a lot of interference into our relationship. They tried their hardest to make our relationship end. Why did they want your relationship to end? Basically, they really didn't like and couldn't come to terms with the fact that like he's my family and that like he's the one that I want to pour into, like he's my first call. And so I think that that just led them on like this rampage of trying to make it all burn down. And it's made us so much stronger, yeah. but have we not been as strong? Like that could have been what ended us and what yeah. took away like this beautiful life, our home, our marriage, like. Exactly. So that was definitely deeply affected our relationship, but we now it like doesn't as much. We've moved forward. My name's Luca, I'm 25, I'll be 26 next month. <laughs> and I'm Jai, I'm 26, and we've been married for eight months. Has there been any other sort of outside influences that has sort of um, disapproved of your marriage? I don't <laughs> Oh yeah, where we come from in West Virginia, there's a bunch of... Very um, racist. Yeah, very racist very people, racist. very rednecks, hillbillies, that type of stuff. Very weird, those people are cut off. 
<laughs> they have not been spoken to. That's right. They got those messages to me and were not responded to. Hey, but you? And was this something that caused strain in your family? A lot of people had a lot of stuff to say, hmm. but like she said, we pushed through that stuff. And like friends or not? Not, not necessarily or? friends, but where we're from, it's a very small community. Oh, okay. So a lot of a lot of people see you and on a daily basis and they have a lot of a lot of stuff to say and, and it, if they see a wow. difference it's like a, yeah it makes it that's real alarming weird. like being with a white person yeah i got a me bunch of messages for from people that didn't even attend our wedding or didn't even have anything to do with us at all distant and relatives and it was say. just like are you sure that this is what you want to do are you sure that that you're interested in this type of life, mm -hmm. type of thing, and it was just differences. Yeah. And they thought that that would have an impact, and it didn't. He's the person that I love, and he's the one that I married, and I said yes to him, so we're here. Just a second. You're watching this, and you're not subscribed to Jubilee? Go on, I'm giving you three seconds, okay? Go ahead. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. You subscribed? The next prompt is, if I caught my partner cheating, I would give them a second chance. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. Yep. Interesting, every single person. I'm definitely passionate about it because in prior relationships, I've always been cheated on. So I came into this marriage that was like, deal breaker. That and any form of abuse, I will definitely leave. And sex, I take it so seriously. We both waited until marriage to have um, sex, so, so and yeah. she told me this from day one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I knew it. Do you know? It was part of the whole dating process, like a non-starter for her yeah. if I ever went down that road. But as I told her, I went into the marriage with the mindset to stay committed, and that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Hi, it's Randy, 43 years old. Hi, my name is Shawnee. I'm 33 years old, and we've been married for a little over a year. You all took an oath, right, to love each other through anything, support each other through anything. So, is there no circumstance where, let's say, your partner cheated on you, that you would be able to forgive them and, you know, keep the relationship going? Yeah, correct. There's no circumstance. No circumstance. Because I feel like if somebody cheats, you've already broken the oath. And like, I also feel like there's a lot of things that happen before somebody cheats. So there's, if you, if somebody is willing to do all these things, break the oath, you can't be like, we have an oath though. No, you don't, you broke it. Now there's right. no oath. Like now we're just right. married and you don't right. care, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's about that respect for your partner. It's about that communication too. Cause like you can respect and love your partner and be unsatisfied and be like, I am not satisfied. Like, can we figure out how to satisfy each other? We were Instead of just this stepping yesterday, out. Like, yeah, exactly. Literally yesterday we were chilling and we were like, you need to go to your partner and say like, hey, I'm not sexually satisfied. So are we opening up our marriage? Are you now like watching porn? Like what is, what's happening? Because I think it shows extremely poor communication to cheat. Just break up, like, you know, cause, yeah. or yeah. fix it. Would anyone here be open to having a threesome with their partner? <laughs> Let me pop my ankle and go, <laughs> let us get it ready. <laughs> I know that he would feel some excitement of me like touching a cooter or, oh, me, yeah, like, or it, just me lightly. just like being with a female <laughs> because just like I said before, we're both very comfortable with each other. He is my other part of me. So if we want to have fun, we'll have fun. So you guys would have a three way if? If it happened, if but he would not touch her. Oh, okay. No. Wait, no. what? Let me just You're say, just what? Yeah. Yeah. it's just me. Hey, it's just me. He's just because he's even said it himself. He has no intention of touching another female. He has no intention of being good. there. He just yeah. would like to. Uh, well, he would just well, like just to like see it. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Just like him. <laughs> wait, wait. What, you, what is that? Good, wait, what, is that? <laughs> what is that? What is that? What is that? But so you, ha but you haven't done this yet. No. no. Are you planning on maybe doing it? Uh, a future if event? it ever came into our into our. It's not our, a plan thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. You don't it plan it. It's yeah. just kind of just what happens. Too but much he school, would too never much touch work. another okay. female. I don't want nobody to watch this and think that he's gonna touch you. So. <laughs> Be careful that's in that. the comments. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is there anyone else who would be down for a three-way? I know. Yeah. Okay. Like I know that she's also attracted to women. 
And so we also agree like there is no cheating, there is no stepping outside of that unless of course it's agreed upon, right? As long as I get to watch, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right, you know what I mean? Like, I have five senses, let me get one of them going, you know what I mean? Like, If we're gonna have another person we're playing with, we're gonna enjoy them together. They're gonna be like a tool. You can do more than of, watch? Yes. Okay. Oh, that. <laughs> because I'm just saying, I, he surprises me all the time, so I'm like, I'm satisfied. I'm more than happy. So. The next prompt is, it's okay to watch porn when you're in a relationship. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. Ah, oh, what's over there? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're both on no. Hmm. The next prompt is, there have been times where I've been severely unhappy during our marriage. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. All right, everybody, go ahead and turn around. Elena, let's start with you. I'm like literally here because of the marriage. Like he's my superhero all the time. Like he's the one that always shows me love and gives my body and mind and soul to everything I need. So shit happens, it's not his fault. Did something happen or there was a time where you were very unhappy? Not having a job and not being able to contribute to the household's weighs on me, so. Joshua, how do you help your partner through these tough times? I wouldn't say I, I do a lot, I just think I'm, I'm just there. Is that what he's you not, need? He's not just there, he does help. Like he doesn't even realize a lot like how helpful he is just by looking me in the eye and it, being there. Like just that small action of looking someone in the eye is very helpful, so. It's just a season, it's just a season. Yeah. I've been there. It's just a season, I promise you that. You know, I, I really wonder if women 50 years ago would have had the same pressures that we have today of just like, you know, hey, I'm not working right now, I can't contribute to the, mm -hmm. the household. Would they have even thought it's about that? We talk different. about that all the time. Yeah. It's, it's a different world right now. It's a right different now. world now, but I promise you it's just a season. Yeah. This is an opportunity for you to get creative in some Figure of the things that you're, you that you're good at. I have a lot of talent. I know what I'm good at. It's, this, this is our, my moment. This is our moment to share with the world that I have a lot of love to give and a lot of stories to share. And I'm, I'm open to any of feedback and anything. Just, I'm just, I'm ready. Luca, do you want to share? You know, we've had struggles like everyone, but not that severe unhappiness mm -hmm. due to our relationship. Mm -hmm. But we've gone through some really difficult things yeah. since we've been together. Like, shit has really hit the fan at many yeah. points. Um, <laughs> insurance has denied medications that one of us need to feel good. Mm -hmm. Or it's out of stock in the pharmacy. Yeah. When you take away someone's medication that keeps them stable, mm -hmm. that can really send someone. We're emotional people, so... We have our struggles, so we get to that point where it's like, do I want to live anymore? Like, I hate myself. I hate like all of this, and mm -hmm. I think we've both gotten to those really dark spots. Yeah, I truly believe we'll get through anything together. Of course, and mm -hmm. like I'm always here for you when you're when you're feeling like that. You know, yeah. go out, make a care basket, mm -hmm. get you your favorite food, and, and you're right there for me. So, yeah. I think we're alive because of each other. Yeah, I think so too. The next prompt is. I believe the strongest marriages are based in religious faith. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Uh, can we stand in the head? Go ahead and turn around. Randy, Shani, you both say yes. Our relationship is uh, rooting in faith. Some of the first conversations we had was the reality we were not gonna have sex. Even when we hang out alone, we're not gonna take it that far. We are going to wait till marriage because we're basing this relationship on our faith in God, so. A big part of my spiritual journey is making sure that I live a life that is honorable to the Lord. Abstaining was one. I needed to make sure that we believe in the same thing. We're both Christians. Religion is deep rooted in my life. So I needed someone who can come in and help me fight that thing. So I'm curious because I think a lot of people don't adhere to the whole, you know, wait till marriage to be intimate 
Can you speak on what that experience was like? Did it make things? It was hard. Was it? Okay. <laughs> was it, it was hard? Was it difficult? <laughs> no, it was easy. About. It was literally it was hard. hard. Right? And it was figuratively hard. <laughs> so, I mean, there's times I go over and I see my wife and before we got married and I come over and right. we're hanging out and the thoughts start to come and the body starts to react. Yeah. And we have to just figure it out. And I'm sleeping out, you know, on the couch. I was going to say, what did you do to like... <laughs> Well, we were in a long distance yeah. relationship, so that helped. Um, I was always helps. against okay. long distance relationships, by the way. But in this instance, like, it actually helped. He was saving himself for marriage, first of all, when you were a teenager, so. Um, <laughs> it's good to have things in common, so having that common ground religion, I think that's good. But I think that marriage is so independent of that. I think it's that commitment that can happen with religion and it can happen without. The next prompt is, I know the number one issue that we need to work on. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. Wow, there's a bunch of self-aware couples over here. We're all like, yeah. That was great. yeah. We all communicate with each other. I like it, okay. Ours is definitely communication. He feels like he's being attacked when I express myself just because it's not, it's not, it's foreign to him. So we're still in the aspect of figuring out how to respond. You, you agreed this is the, yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is we, the communication? I've been trying to work on myself and she's the first lady in my life that's ever kind of expressed and yeah, like she said, acknowledged. And all. It's, it, it's hard to do, but with Tom and with a great partner, anything can happen with teamwork, so. It's something that we're definitely working on. So Randy, what is the, what's the number one thing that you need to work on? I think it's communication styles. That's oh, how I would define it. Yeah. The styles of our communication. I tend to be more stoic. I tend to be more happy-go-lucky, don't worry about a lot of things. My wife is a lot more deliberate and she's, her style is more to there is a problem, we gotta get on it, we gotta deal with it, it's on my mind. Early in our marriage, I was a little bit more aggressive. Growing up, people always talked to me really hard and that was always hard on me because I'm just like, why do people talk to me like this? Like, mm. So I kind of came into the marriage way, really direct, sharp with the tongue and I had to check myself. It was a really bad habit of just sharp tongue, tone off, timing off. I always yeah. brought up things at the wrong time and I'm getting better, I'm not perfect, but I'm, I am getting better with my timing. And as we worked on it, her being able to just speak the right tone allows me to want to be a man to do everything for her anyway. So all the things that she wants, she gets when I can just feel that right tone. And we've gotten better for it. I think. Yeah, okay. I, I think now before I speak. So it's definitely gotten better for sure. So I think we were stuck in this loop of like, I noticed the tone is off. I noticed his expression is, are you okay? Whereas now it's like, okay, you promised me. If you're not okay, you will come to me. And so like, that's me trusting that if he has negative emotions or is going through something, he's gonna come to me and let me know. And he's also like the first person in my life to really just want me to be me, like whoever I am, like whatever it is, just be that. So like he wanted to know all these things so that he could be the supportive teammate, like the supportive husband. When I realized that, that is what like was the switch for me. It's like there's a reason why expressing my emotions to you is important. Like you want to actually be there because I don't have to think about all these things by myself anymore. Like I can actually lean on you. We're both from tra traumatic childhoods or we have traumatic backgrounds. Because we have a son, the the childhood trauma is coming up and we're both having to work on that individually. Cause at the beginning we were good mm. and we're, we're strong, solid, like communication wise. Yeah, but because, because of the baby, we're, we're both working with our abandonment issues, I guess. It will seem like she's pissed off and I'm like, what's wrong? And she's like, nothing's wrong. But then half the time something is wrong, <laughs> right? Like I'm not wrong that something's wrong sometimes, yeah. but sometimes yeah. nothing's really wrong. <laughs> but now you ask too many times. Yeah. It's yeah. And just a lot of that stuff coming up, just being a parent makes it, you start realizing things, you know. The next prompt is, I make significant sacrifices in our relationship that go unnoticed or unappreciated. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. 
Okay, go ahead and turn around. Okay, everyone says no, except Haley. It's not very big, but just very, very simple, just very, very simple self-care. $60 haircuts, and I haven't had anything self-care-wise for me. For We've been here for almost two years now. I feel like I haven't really been tended to a lot self-care-wise, and he has, I mean, all he needs is his haircut, so. And mind you, we're both here by ourselves with no family here, so we pay everything by ourselves. It's like a lot. We're young and we live paycheck to paycheck, so I understand that's the only thing that he needs to have done for himself, but I mean, I... You would like to I would just like to have something for some me. For you, okay. When it comes to the nails and stuff, we're not necessarily allowed to have nails in nursing school. So like the whole getting the nails thing done, like it's not not much of a. Can necessity. I interrupt? You can just get gel, clear not clear polish. I just need my cuticles pushed back. You can teach me how to do it. I do it for you. Okay. Yeah. But you want to go to the. I want to go. I want the experience. Just like he wants. I found some good. Because I can cut thing. hair. I can trim his beard. I can do his eyebrows if he wants me to. Would you let her do that? No. Uh, we tried once with the eyebrows, and I ended up on one. <laughs> Whatever. But it no, it kind of it goes deeper, right? It's like. Those are the things that make you feel beautiful. Yeah, it's what makes me feel like a woman. Yeah, and sometimes men can miss those things yeah. of just like, hey, I feel beautiful when I, when my husband yeah. treats me to get my nails done. Right. You know, it's just, it's just a nice gesture to remind a woman how beautiful you are. Mm -hmm. That's really what I it is. I can feel pampered. Thank you. The next prompt is, I sometimes fear that I won't be able to give my partner everything they deserve. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. All right, go ahead and turn around. Hmm. Babe, I just feel like ultimately every day that I wake up, I'm driven to make you happy. So it's, it's not that I feel that I won't, I just feel that there's that constant drive to wanna do it and I'm never satisfied to just kind of start coasting and taking her for granted. We have shared vision, we have shared goals. That's what I think brought us together. And that's a part of what drives me every day. And I don't think I ever want to lose that. Stay so, with this yeah. guy. But, but you sometimes still had that fear that for you sure. won't be able to for sure. give it to her? Things happen, things go slower than you want, things don't work out when you want. But I know her dream, she shares them with me, and I want to make them happen, right? So. And I appreciate that, but I always have to remind him that it's not your responsibility to make me happy. You add to, you know, happiness for me, but it's ultimately my responsibility. Luca, sometimes you fear that you can't give your partner everything that they deserve. When you love your partner so much, you want them to have the world. Like, you deserve the best of the best of the best. Sometimes I'm feeling down on myself. Sometimes there might be an argument and maybe I responded in a way that, you know, I'm not proud of that. You deserve better. But as a general thing, I, I feel like I give my 110% to be the man you deserve every day. It's you're so hard constant. on yourself. Like you're so hard on yourself because <laughs> like you've already given me the world. Like you've given me the world like again and again and again and again and again. And like, I don't want you to judge yourself off of like the worst things. Everybody says things that like we wish we hadn't said. Everybody like reacts in a way that we wish we hadn't reacted. But like you are very much like a net good. Like and I judge you based off of everything. And all that you give is like exactly what I need to be healthy. It's exactly what I need to like continue loving and being in this relationship. Mm -hmm. So I think you should be less hard on yourself. Thank you. Same to you. All right. First of all, thank you all so much for being here, being honest, opening up your heart for us, and just being authentic with us. It really, really moved me, and I think it really moved the audience as well. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. We appreciate it. Team on three, one, two, three, team. <laughs>